All right, here in this video, we're gonna look at finding roots of polynomials from graphs. And we've already done that, but we're using a different word called roots. And then we're going to extend this into actually writing the equation of a polynomial or quadratic in factored form. So the, a root is nothing more than an x-intercept. And we have some possible things that could happen where if I'm looking here on the graph on the left-hand side, the graph could pass straight through the x-axis on one side or the other, or it could even touch the x-axis and come back on the same side it came from. So it could stay above after it touches, or it could do the same thing and stay below. If a graph passes straight through the x-axis at an x value, so if I had an x-intercept at uh, negative a comma zero and then b comma zero, the real number roots, that means the x-intercepts that you can see, are going to be negative a and then b. If it touches the x-axis and comes back up, what it is classified as, it's still considered a real number root at x is equal to that x value, but it's said to have a multiplicity of two. And now this is something that is more uh, common in Algebra 2, but if it touches and stays on the same side, it's said to have a multiplicity of 2. So let's look at a couple of examples here, and I got four graphs, and what we want to do is we want to find all the real solutions and indicate the multiplicities. So looking at the graph on the left-hand side, so I go look and say, what are my real solutions everywhere the graph touches the x-axis? So it touches at negative 2, positive 2, and 7. And so my real solutions are going to be x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to positive 2, and x is equal to 7. Now, I'm not going to indicate the multiplicity that happens at negative 2 because it's something that we only use really when we're writing the equation. So let's go to the next graph. All right, where are our real solutions? Well, your real solutions are where it touches or passes through the x-axis. It happens three times. We're going to write those. It happens at x is equal to negative 4, x is equal to 0, and x is equal to positive 4. And then looking at the bottom left, real solutions, x-intercepts, that's going to be negative 6, and at 1 and 7. So our real solutions would be at negative 6, x is equal to 1, and x is equal to 7. Now, out of the 3, when x is equal to 1, that's, it touches and stays on the same side of the x-axis it came from. This has a multiplicity of 2. We're just not writing it when it asks what are our real solutions. And then lastly, we have the graph on the bottom right. Real solutions, where it crosses the x-axis, happens 3 times. x is equal to negative 8 x is equal to negative 1, and x is equal to 4. Remember, the negative 8 has a multiplicity of 2 when it comes to writing the equation. So now we're moving on to the factor theorem of polynomials. Now this is very useful when it's coming to writing the equation of a polynomial from a graph, or maybe even trying to identify a possible equation if it's written in factored form. The factor theorem says that if x is equal to a number is a zero or a root, then x minus c has to be a factor. Now likewise, if I, x was equal to a negative number, but as a zero, then x plus that number, x plus c had to be equal to a factor. Now, looking at the graph, this is where it is very important. Now, looking at these figures below, this is where it's very important to identify multiplicities. Because if I pass straight through, like I do at negative a and positive b, that means that my real number roots are at x is equal to negative a and x is equal to b, and meaning that the factors are going to be x plus a, and x minus b, which means that since I had two factors, I could write an equation of the polynomial by multiplying those two factors together unless I had some more information. If the multiplicity was at 2, like the graph over here on the right at x is equal to c, that means I would write that factor as x minus c, and then I'd have to square that to create that uh, graph of that polynomial. All right, so now we're going to look at a couple of examples where we're simply trying to match the graph to a possible equation for the graph based on what we see. Now, if you're given the graph and you're trying to identify an equation, identify your, your roots or your real zeros, 
And so, or my x-intercepts, there's a couple of ways to write that. And so I have an x-intercept at negative 1, and I have an x-intercept at positive 3. Notice the graph passes straight through both of those. So that means that their multiplicities are technically 1. We don't write that. So that means their factors, I'd have x plus 1, and I'd have x minus 3 that have to be multiplying together. And I see that right here. And so our answer is x minus 3 times x plus 1. Now let's look here at this next graph. So I'm looking, and I want to write an equation of this, or identify an equation of this, but I do that based on the x-intercepts. There's only one x-intercept, and that's that x is equal to negative 4. Notice how the graph touches and comes back where it came from. It didn't actually pass through. This is said to be multiplicity of 2. If it's multiplicity of 2, you take that 0, turn it into a factor, so it would be x plus 4. Multiplicity of 2 means that you square it, and so I'm going through and I'm looking for something like that. I don't see something raised to the second power, but I see the x plus 4 times x plus 4 down here on the bottom right. There's our answer. All right, next one. So now I actually have a, this is a polynomial. It's crossing more than twice. Quadratics cross, cross twice. Polynomials cross more than two times. And so we want to identify an equation based on what we see. And so we find our x-intercepts, and we're going to write them. So there's three of them. We have x is equal to negative 6. We have x is equal to 0. And we have x is equal to 3. And we want to identify an equation that would have that. Well, so what I would have is I'm going to write the factors that would be created. So the x-intercept of negative 6 creates the factor of x plus 6. The x-intercept of 0 would be x minus 0. And then the x-intercept at 3 would be the factor x minus 3. And I would multiply all those together. So we have x plus 6 times x minus 3. Now the x minus 0, that's the same thing as an x. I can put that right out here out front. And so we go look to try to match an answer. We got right here on the top right-hand side. And lastly, one more. We want to identify an equation off this graph. So when you're doing that, you go find your x-intercepts, and we have two of them. We have an x-intercept, or we have a 0 at x is equal to 2, and then we have a 0 at x is equal to 8. Now notice how 8, how it touches, and it comes back on the same side it came from. So that means at 8, we have a multiplicity of 2, and so when we go write our factors, the x-intercept of 2 generates the factor x minus 2, and the x-intercept of 8 generates the factor of x minus 8, but since it's multiplicity of 2, I'd square that. Now, we don't see anything with an exponent of 2 there, but x minus 8 squared is the same thing as x minus 8 times x minus 8, and so our answer would be the one equation here on the top left-hand side.